This video is sponsored by the War Games Research Group. I'm trying to build a complete compendium to teach new players how to play DBMM, so please like the video, comment and subscribe so this series gets shown to more people. Last week we learnt the basics of combat resolution, and check the play link linked in the description if you haven't yet seen that video. Last week we learnt that the basic combat outcomes were for units to stand when the result is a draw, to recoil their base death when beaten but not doubled, and to be destroyed when beaten by double or more. But one of the beauties of DBMM and something that gives it a huge amount of its historical flavour are the unique combat outcomes that break this formula and give the unit types their unique feel. Every unit type will have at least one unique combat interaction and looking at a chart of all of them at once can seem daunting. My advice for new players is, once you've picked your army, learn just the unique combat interactions for your units. In particular, focus on what circumstances are your units at risk of a quick kill and in what circumstances can they perform a quick kill, more on these later, as to begin with that will help guide you on what the good and bad matchups are for your unit types. While there might seem like there are a lot of unique combat results to learn, and this is where a lot of the perceived complexity of DBMM comes from, in reality there are only four different outcomes that change the formula from the last video. A unit can be spent, a unit can be quick killed, a unit can be repulsed, or a unit can flee. That's it. So we'll cover these four today, and a couple of extra rules at the end of the video to give you a complete picture of the combat phase, and you'll know all the unique combat outcomes in DBMM. So let's start with the results spent. The spent result occurs when a unit is beaten by double or more and replaces the usual destroyed result. Only three units can be spent, Siloy, the lightest form of foot skirmishers, Light Horse and Cavalry which are mounted troops that fight with a combination of both close range shooting and controlled charges. When a unit is spent, it's removed from the board as if it was destroyed, however its morale equivalent value is not counted when determining if the command becomes disheartened and a unit is not broken until over half of the units are spent and lost rather than the usual one-third for normally destroyed casualties. Being spent represents a unit that fights in a skirmishing style, expending all of its ammunition or otherwise being driven off by their opponents, but not being killed or routed. Light Horse, for example, is spent against most foot troops in good and rough going, and this is very realistic. Many accounts of foot troops fighting Light Horse archers like the Mongols describe forming a shield wall and simply outlasting the hail of arrows until the riders retreated, rather than inflicting many casualties in return. So that's all there is to know about the spent result. The second unique combat result is called the quick kill in the community. These are matchups in which an element is destroyed if they lose by even a single combat factor, rather than simply recoiling. This is an incredibly powerful effect, and one of the key tactical considerations of a game of DBMM is setting up or avoiding these quick kill opportunities. These quick kill opportunities are often bound and terrain dependent. For example, knights quick kill many different types of foot troops, but only in their own bound and only in good going. This makes sense of course, representing these foot units being swept away by a terrifying shock cavalry charge from heavily armoured knights, but that's only going to be possible over good ground and when the knights are taking the initiative to charge the enemy. Just that little mechanic of when and where the rules work paints such a clear picture of what's going on during that knight's charge. It also provides great tactical options for the knight player and their opponent. Knights are the kings of the open battlefield, but if your army is made up of lots of units that would end up being quick killed by knights in the open, you're encouraged to occupy rough and difficult going to deny them the ability to do so. The third unique outcome is a repulse. Whereas a unit would normally recoil their base depth when beaten but not doubled, if a unit repulses against their enemy, it instead moves straight backwards anywhere from 160 to 240 paces. No 80 paces here is the equivalent to one base width in whatever scale you're playing, so here on these 40mm bases, the unit can repulse 80 to 120mm. Like being spent, repulses are mostly conducted by lighter troops and represents a semi-organised retirement of a body of troops to escape combat, but still being ready to fight and facing the enemy. They're not fleeing in panic, but they're retiring more than a usual recoil. A final thing to note is that if any friendly troops were in passable terrain block the 160 paces of movement backwards, then that unit just does a standard recoil instead. The fourth and final unique combat outcome is fleeing. This is a full disorganised panic retreat, however the unit is not routing completely from the field and reforms once at a safe distance from the enemy. There are things that might cause a unit to flee outside of combat, but we'll cover that in other episodes. When a unit receives a flee result, it first recoils its base depth. It then turns 180 degrees and continues moving the rest of a full tactical move in that direction. Note that unlike when you repulse, your unit is now facing the wrong direction. Importantly, if it causes any unit to be pushed back by the initial recoil, those units flee as well. This is 90% of the flee reaction summarised. 
However, there are some additional complexities if the unit's pathway to flee is blocked by friends or enemies or impassable terrain. A fleeing element must, if possible, pivot on contact or as soon as it can by the minimum amount necessary and no more than 90 degrees to avoid impassable terrain, to pass through or around friends that block its movement and to avoid ending up closer to any enemy element unless those enemies are over 800 paces away or beyond the other side of an unfrozen river. A unit cannot flee in a direction that has enemies, friendly units it can't pass through or impassable terrain within 400 paces. For example, here a base of Alexandrian knights flee having lost the combat with a unit of bows, but there's an enemy element in its path of travel and it must not go closer to it. As such, it pivots away and flees in a different direction. If an element cannot successfully pivot to flee from an opposing unit and must contact it, such as in this example, then you contact it and fight in the next bound. If you win, you do not inflict any combat result, you simply burst through your opponent. If a unit blocking a fleeing element wins by even one, then that fleeing element is destroyed. If an element cannot avoid friendly units that cannot flee through, which is dependent on the type, it immediately bursts through them, then recoils them if its morale equivalent is equal or higher. If not, then the fleeing unit is spent. In the majority of cases, you will have been mindful of what causes your units to flee and are unlikely to have enemies in your direct rear. So in the majority of cases, a flee result involves simply recoiling, turning and then moving the remainder of your move distance. But these additional rules are good things to be mindful of when you're in a more complex situation. And that's it. Those are all the regularly occurring special combat outcomes. There are two more rules I want to make you aware of. The first is that in special circumstances, a destroyed element can end up destroying the base behind it as well. The most common examples of where this happens are any base behind an elephant is destroyed when an elephant unit is destroyed as the creatures turn around and run amok in their own formation. Any foot unit behind a unit destroyed by warband is also destroyed as the fierce fighters overrun the front rank of units. Any rear rank of bows when the front rank is destroyed by knights, expendables or superior camelry, and any siloi, hordes or artillery in the rear rank when a front rank is destroyed. You also lose two bases of troops if your unit is hard flanked and the flanking unit covers the full side of both bases as seen in the previous video, or if the element is double based. Warband's ability to kill two ranks of enemy foot makes them very dangerous foes to face, and the lack of the ability to put units behind elephants makes them a risky unit to have in your battle line. These rules are worth keeping in mind if you or your opponent intends on using these unit types. Finally, there are a few rare instances where a draw result also ends up with a unit being destroyed. Those are shot units, inferior baggage, expendables, and any foot unit that draws combat with expendables. These are a final thing to keep in mind if you intend on using those type of troops. Well, that's it. Those are the four major unique combat outcomes explained. Spent occurs on a double, your unit is removed, but doesn't affect morale until a command reaches over 50% casualties. A quick kill kills a unit on any degree of victory, not just a double. A repulse withdraw any amount between 160 and 240 paces, controlling player's choice. And finally, a flee recoil, turn 180 degrees, and make the rest of a full tactical move straight backwards. I'll be doing more videos in the future looking in depth at each unit type and there we'll cover its unique combat outcomes and how to use them effectively so be sure to subscribe so you won't miss that. In the meantime please also like the video and leave a comment if it's helped you learn DVMM or if you've got interest in the rule set or just so this gets shown to more people.